Today, I wanted to talk a bit about um, equipment. I, I hear from a lot of people that um, lack of equipment or lack of the right plugins and things like that really uh, tend to slow uh, you guys down uh, from finishing songs or being as professional as you want to be. Um, you feel like stock plugins are not really going to do the job for you and that if you're a professional, then every single tool you have is some high-end sort of plug-in or whatever. And my goal is always to, um, you know, while you're here, to, you know, while you're still alive, make sure that your music gets out. Make sure that, you know, you're speaking a language um, through your music and, and telling a personal story through your music or, or a personal attitude or a pers personal... Um, perspective really of what you're doing artistically and I, I find that so many people um, don't allow themselves to to speak uh, through their music you know they have ideas and you know for some reason they just don't let them out I'm kind of curious uh, what you guys feel is holding you back uh, from from finishing songs Chris, I think you've just nailed uh, one of the things that I'm going to discuss, and that is that you, you feel the opposite. You feel like you have too much uh, in your arsenal, too many plugins, too many choices. And I'll tell you from experience and from the experience of working with so many uh, producers that this tends to hold people back much, much, much more than... Um, than not having or feeling like you don't have enough. Um, it's better to have a, a few tools that you use and you know, um, and you know them well, instead of you know tons of tools uh, that you don't know very well at all. Um, although there should there there is definitely some uh, essentials that I think you need in order to you know make quality music. So I don't I'm not trying to say. That, you know, if all you've got is, you know, forks and spoons, I mean, sure, use them, uh, you know, make make uh, some music with whatever you have. But for the most part, you do need certain tools in order to make music, whether it be like a physical keyboard of some sort or a plug-in with synths or internal plugins, uh, you know, with Ableton and that sort of thing. When I s finally chose to like stick with like, three or four different bass sounds instead of every song having to have something different and having to recreate it, having to build new kits and everything and trying to get everything to sound professional. You know, when I get a couple songs that sound professional, I tend to recycle those sounds and, and the, the processing because I know it sounds good. It's a good starter point. And then I change from there. That way I have a, a good jump off point, you know. Um, so yeah, working with just a few different bass sounds uh, helped me finish so much more music um, that I wouldn't have done if I would have trying, kept trying to focus on making new sounds. Because every time you, you make a new sound, you have to perfect that sound. And my bass parts got better over time because I was incrementally bettering them song by song, but I was starting with kind of the same uh, sound. You know what I mean? So by the time you get to your 10th song, that bass sounds really dialed in. And then I can go back to some of the older songs and I can fix those up, you know what I mean? Which is much better than trying to perfect one song and getting so much less done. You know, get as, as good as you can, move on to the next song, because you're always gonna learn something that you can use and go back to your old songs. I just wanna know how many of you kind of have this attitude or feeling like you're missing something with your music and you think that what is going to fill that gap is another uh, piece of equipment, another uh, plug-in or, or uh, an effect or something that's going to um, take your songs to the next level uh, and fill in that gap that you feel is missing. Uh, type in a three if, if that already is something that connects with you or, or a belief system that you, you have currently. Um, so here's the thing. The truth really is that for the most part, buying extra tools is something you're, you're looking outside yourself 
for something to fix your music. In order, in other words, instead of fixing yourself and fixing your process and fixing your own abilities and capabilities and your own creativity, you're looking to tools to allow you to make better music without making yourself better. Does that make sense? You think a piece of equipment will make you better and it makes you it ends up making you lazier because you now are giving a plug in the responsibility to make you sound better in store instead of bettering your own abilities. All right. So this is the big problem. And it, it's probably an unconscious thing. Consciously, no one's thinking, oh, yeah, that, well, this plugin is going to uh, alone make me a better uh, music producer. However, somewhere underlying, you know, beneath it all, this is the reason that you're getting more equipment is because on some level, you're too lazy to improve yourself and your own creativity. So you want a tool to do the work for you. Um, that's just the truth. Um, and if you keep giving yourself these new tools, um, they're going to satisfy you for a few days, maybe a week or something. But you might not ever use them in a song. Because what you're going to do is you're going to move yourself from actually trying to make better music to just putting your music off so that you can learn this new tool. You're, you're going to somehow tell yourself, that you need to stop the music making in order to learn this new tool that you just got. And you'll spend a couple of weeks maybe learning it and playing with it. And you might get bored of it before you even uh, use it in a song, right? And then what happens? Well, then you you feel like, well, maybe that wasn't the right tool to fix my problem. So I better get a different tool. Clearly that one wasn't the one. Um, there's certain tools that are going to be important, obviously. You need tools that make sound, clearly. So you need, you know, a couple synth tools. And different kinds of synths will be capable of giving you different kinds of sounds. Clearly, having tools and a couple different tools gives you certain options. The problem is that you don't realize how flexible one tool can actually be because you're not diving deep enough into it. You know, uh, a lot of times people will just go through the presets and go, ah, this synth is crap and not ever dive into what it is absolutely capable of if you put a little creativity into it, right? So um, that is something that I want you to keep in mind. Um, the tools that you need, uh, if you've got Ableton Suite, you have all the tools that you need. You, you really do. Um, there's tons of shit in there. And if you go into Max for Live tools and synths and all that sort of stuff, you got even more. And you don't need all of them. And you shouldn't need all of them. You should pick like two or three things that are going to be your main tools and really learn those and start making music right away. There's no problem with you eventually finding like, oh, I like this compressor, the sound of it a little better than the one inside of Ableton. Fine. But... If you're not finishing music with with what you already have, then all you're doing is you're putting something else, another roadblock in the way between you and finishing songs because you now you've got another tool to, to learn. Okay, so uh, great. I won't get other tools. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get a push too. I'm going to get a push uh, because that's going to make my music better. How is that any different? You're still going to need to learn a new tool. You're still not finishing songs. I have a, a push too. Uh, I probably only use about 10 or 15% of what it's capable of. Why? Because I'm focused on finishing songs and only using it for the absolute things that make my life a little bit easier. And I don't need it for all the other stuff. Originally, I liked the idea of using it because I thought, ah, hands-on, it's gonna be really cool to use. It's gonna feel cooler. But you know what? It's slower. It slows me down. If I try to use one tool for everything when I could just use my mouse and a keyboard, that's super fast. 
most of music making is still cut, copy, paste, duplicate, delete, right? So why are you complicating it? Okay. Um, what you really need to do instead of getting new equipment is uh, you need to improve your listening skills. If you can hear things in other songs and understand the components and the building blocks, because oftentimes one sound is a collection of sounds, usually something in the low frequency, something in the mid frequency, something in the upper frequency. Sometimes it's one sound, but if you're trying to emulate it, it's much easier to emulate one frequency at a time and then layer those things together. There's nothing wrong with Serum or Massive or any of those things. But those of you that don't have that tool, if you think that that's what you need in, in order to make music and you can't make it with operator or uh, analog or uh, the, the wave table uh, synth or any of those, you're being a little bit lazy. Finish songs with that first, all right? Prove to yourself that you can actually finish songs with what you have. Because otherwise, all you're doing is you're pushing off the habit of finishing songs. And once again, you're putting the responsibility of your own creativity on a piece of equipment instead of on, onto yourself. Improve yourself first and foremost. Always improve yourself. And then the tools will be more useful. All right? You are the most essential creative component to your music making. And that's really the message that I'm trying to get across to you guys. No tool is going to fix that. You know, probably some of your favorite bands, you know, maybe not right now, but bands from 20 or more years ago, they didn't have any of the equipment that's available now and they still made great music. So how did they do that? How did they do that without Massive? How did they do that without Serum? How did they do that without Ableton? How did they do that without, you know, unlimited tracks? How did they do that? It's because they, for the most part, if, you, if we look at like bands, They've got their a couple guitars, a couple amps, you know, a, a few choices, but not too many. And they learn how to dial their sound into perfection. And then they use it to write great songs. You know, a bass player often uses the same bass for most of their songs. A drummer often uses the same kit for most of their songs. So why are electronic artists feeling this pressure to make every song fully different instrumentals fully different instruments you're going to have a really difficult time um getting a recognizable sound that is you if you keep trying to change your sound constantly so just some other stuff to think about now there are certain uh, essential plugins um and the the plugins that come standard with your DAWs are perfectly fine you just need to learn them if you learn them, they're, they're going to be perfectly fine for you. And once again, you might find other plugins or synths that you like a little bit better. That's fine. Uh, but use them and stop, you know, at some point. But the essentials are, you know, that you're going to use in pretty much every song. You're going to use a compressor. You're going to use EQ. You're going to use reverb. And you're most likely going to use delay as well. Those are the four essentials, right? Those four you can alone you can make great music with and you know all through the ages those have been for essential effects that are always used okay um so those are the ones that i urge you to learn not to figure out don't go to forums and figure out who thinks what is the best use what you got and get really good at understanding how they work if you understand how your plugins that come standard with your dog work you're gonna get 10 times more out of them than people that keep on, you know, buying new compressors and this and that and keep going to forums and all that stuff because they're getting new tools hoping that the tool will just freaking work. Well, you, you need to know how it works uh, in order to get anything out of it. So once again, use the tools you have and then make music, period. And then when you think about something that you want to add Know specifically what you want before you look for the tool. That is probably the most important thing. That way, you're not just being sold new ideas and new stuff. You're constantly only getting the things that you feel are going to improve what you're doing. For example, I'm not a huge fan of Ableton's uh, chorus and flanger effects. 
So for me, if I want that sound, I'm probably going to go outside of the of the internal effects. I mean, they'll do the job, but for some of the things that I want, I'll probably go outside of that. But at least I know specifically why I'm going after a certain plugin instead of just, um, once again, subscribing to all, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, otherwise, you're just going to get tools you don't need, tools that you won't use, and that sort of thing. I do like the idea of getting a new tool and not knowing how to use it and spending a couple days just recording hours and hours of just experimentation that you can take and cut up those sounds, pull out the cool pieces. And then you got tons of like your own sample library of interesting sounds. I think that's really fun. But I think once again, I think you can do that with your internal synths as well. So um, once again, if you're not finishing songs, then that should be your focus.